What's up, awesome Canadians? Um, I just wanted to stop and take a minute here just to show you where I'm at. Um, it's phenomenal, gorgeous. It's this nice little spot I like to come hang out at. Okay, I found some shade here in this awesome spot. And I want to talk to you, Canada. I want to talk to you about Stephen Harper and just kind of catch up and um, see where it goes. I've, I actually got a really great question that came into my email this morning and I, it, it was perfect timing for me to get the question because it's been on my mind lately, um, you know, what's been going on in Canada and sometimes it gets just so frustrating and I'm so overwhelmed with everything that's going on here and uh, all the terrible changes that have been uh, made to laws or just things that are happening too quickly and um, you know I can really foresee a lot of problems in the future with the current government and uh, everything that they're doing to change Canada so um, and it's for the it's it's not for the good the change is not for the good at all and by by for the good I'm referring to it's not good for the people it's not good for the environment and it's not good for the future um, so those are all things I'm going to talk about today. But let's get back to the question I received. Um, and I really, actually, I'd rather get questions because there's so much going on and um, I have so much information stored up in my brain and I'm really a lot better if I'm uh, responding to something, like as in a conversation. So if you have any questions you'd like to submit about Canada, about Stephen Harper, about anything that I'm saying, in any of these videos or my writing on my blog, just feel free to shoot me, get a hold of me somehow, leave a comment in the comment section, and um, you know, once I get questions rolling in, I will definitely make more videos and answer them. Um, it's really just for my for my benefit too, um, for a starting point because I've got to you know start somewhere. There's so much. It's like, oh, uh, where do I even start? Okay, so I'm going to start <laughs> on that note. Um, the question I received today was coming from Circus Head, and it was on video I made called Stephen Harper is a Dictator. And when I originally made that video, I had a whole series in mind that was going to give examples and samples of why I came to that conclusion. And um, it might not be super noticeable yet, and to some it, it is noticeable. I'm not the only one who thinks this and who can see right through the propaganda of the uh, conservative or Harper's Canada, Government of Canada. Um, ugh, I, okay, let's get to the question. Question is, if, if Stephen Harper was a dictator, I wouldn't have been able to watch your video. So you are refuting your own argument by simply posting this video. Um, and then it goes on to say, but beyond that, you know what your video could really use is examples. And I couldn't agree with you more. Um, sorry for the delay, and I will keep these videos coming, so keep the questions coming. Um, so if Stephen Harper was a dictator, how come you're able to see these videos? Well, because he really, he's a dictator in training. Let's call him a dictator in training, okay? Um, he is changing laws. He's trying to change laws to make it so that you can't see these videos or if he finds or the government finds um, somebody speaking out or you know in the future they'll be able to shut it down so right now they're trying to establish those powers um, so who knows if they're successful maybe in the future you won't be able to see a video like that but right now at, in Canada our Charter of Rights and Freedoms is protecting us and um, it is slowing down uh, Stephen Harper's real action plan, part of his agenda is, you know, complete control over the message and the media and that, you know, if it's not in line with uh, the message he wants to put out, then, you know, he wants to shut it down. So, actions that he's taken, here are some examples. It's not just him. When I, when I refer to Stephen Harper, I'm talking about, yeah, Stephen Harper, I'm talking about the, the majority in the House right now, the conservative government. Um, people who are making these laws, but really we all know that they're all controlled by big corporations, oil, all this dinosaur bullshit that really just we need to, 
we need to change things here on the planet. And so it's not only a problem in Canada, it's a problem worldwide. And um, Stephen Harper is not the be all end all for that. And I am aware of that power goes way beyond his scope. But for purposes of just speaking about Canada, um, one thing here, let me, I wrote down some samples here. Um, so Canada has been, the government of Canada and police, uh, some police services have been making requests to Google to omit certain things from Google search results. So that's one thing that they've been doing. And other countries are doing that too. Um, other governments are doing that. But Google's awesome for its transparency and uh, working with governments. And so they try and base it on laws, whether or not these requests coming from the government are actually valid. Um, but mostly, if you look, I will provide the link in the description um, so you can see for yourself. It's listed up on uh, googletransparency.com. Um, well, where was I going with that? <laughs> okay, so the transparency. Um, oh yeah, most of the requests um, that were put into Google from the government of Canada um, had to do with removing things from search results like blogs, YouTube videos, um, and just certain links. And, and the biggest, the biggest uh, reason they wanted to remove them was for defamation. So it could, I am aware that it could, you know, possibly have a little bit to do with, you know, maybe someone made a, a YouTube video and harassed a kid and, you know, they went through the court process and they said, you know, Google take it down. So in that, um, in that case, Google will, you know, go through the right channels and decide um, what is, what requests will be processed and what things will be taken off the internet but there was a bunch of denied processes um, or denied requests that were just um, things that weren't in line with what the government of Canada or Stephen Harper's message is so he was trying to remove you know blogs that say whatever Stephen Harper's a dictator or videos that would say that anything that would really go against the party's um, messages and you know uh, control messages of control using the media and that'll bring me into another point about controlling the media that seems to be Harper's real action plan his step number one he's been doing it for a while um, this isn't something new but uh, ever since he's taken office you know he has not made himself readily available to the media to journalists um, it's hard to actually get in some time and if you do you have to pre-submit your your questions and you're only allowed to ask those questions and it's like really locked down like security you know he's always got this big posse of people around him and chartering limousines flying them over to India but that is another <laughs> rant completely um, back on track so he doesn't let journalists ask hard-hitting questions everything is pre-screened and approved and then therefore after that you know they get the question in and his people approve it and then he gets this like point written response like this is what I'm gonna say um, it's just a propaganda machine and he's been using the big mainstream media to do to put out his message for quite a long time and if you haven't noticed he doesn't really appear in the media very often he doesn't appear to like talk to Canadians like you know this is what's going on he, he tends to just brush everything off and business 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 and uh, I guess that some of that appeals to uh, people in the business world and you know the economy and everything but economy it, it's become a word like terrorist economy okay like they use it to scare you just like the word terrorist they use it to scare you you know the economy is bad you know the economy is good like they try and tell you how to feel based on these keywords and that's something straight out of Big Brother, uh, you know, 1984, George Orwell. I mean, these these tactics that they're using um, are not hard to see. and They're all around you if you actually just open your eyes and take a moment to look to see what's going on. So, um, requests for taking things off of Google. Oh, they've been monitoring social media and uh, forums online. So... <laughs> Basically, you don't know if you're talking to a government representative or a person 
and um, that's a little annoying because that's not uh, transparency at all. That's the government is using your tax dollars to hire firms to go online and correct misinformation, which <laughs> even misinformation, like correcting misinformation. We're supposed to be free online in the media or online, and uh, they, they're really working on trying to take away those freedoms from us and take away our right to our opinions and free speech. Um, so anyway, they are spending, what I wrote this down, $40 million a year on uh, media monitoring. So that's including everything, the hiring firms and, and advertising is another thing that they're doing. Those action plan ads, they're spending $21 million last year alone in 2012 on action plan ads that I, I'm sure you've seen the videos like Rick Mercer pointing it out. I love that guy. Uh, good Canadian. Uh, he points out that the action plan was completely finished with and I think it was 2009. So they're just uh, pumping out this propaganda making it look like these ads are so wow life is good look how comfortable we are um, nothing's wrong in Canada and um, people are happy working on the pipelines and happy at the, the tar sands and you know th these things are good for the environment like doing you know drilling for oil and you know this is all really good stuff we're, we're, we're creating jobs and everyone's happy so no need to worry about things like you know the pesky environment and everything that you know we're destroying and Stephen Harper has it out for the environment he has it out for scientists he has it out for activists. He has it out to anyone who is opposing of his agenda to just make money and, you know, be the king and in control. And, you know, this is not something new on the planet. He's one of the greedy people, you know, there's greedy people running the world. So, um, and it's crazy because it's disguised as a democracy here. So getting back on point, I, getting back on point, um, it, it looks, on the surface, it looks to be a democracy, but if you peel back just not very much of that top layer, uh, it's definitely not a democracy. Um, he, if it wasn't him personally, like, you know, I'm just going to use Stephen Harper as a, a general, as a general uh, term almost in this. Stephen Harper, you know, was behind, well, the conservatives, they were behind the, ro the robocalls and, you know, really just shaming the integrity of our whole electoral process and democracy in the country and you know it obviously doesn't exist anymore after that blatant display um, I, I, I'm very distracted by that I'm sorry that really bothers me so because of that I really and because of that and because of all the laws that have been they've been trying to push through I, I really have a problem with you know recognizing their government in any way and I generally don't anymore um, because of so many reasons but oh, okay there was another example it looks like my battery and time is ticking so my battery is kind of running out um, another example the online surveillance bill so bill C30 I believe it was uh, when they came out saying you know that the uh, government or whoever they hire private agencies and police can look through your computers without warrants and you track your online activities and doing all those things um, it was squashed there was a huge public outcry about that um, but it was squashed and I believe Vic Taves called us all child pornographers because we opposed doing that so that was that was early on in their plan and they've now made changes to that they scrapped the whole bill and they've reintroduced they plan on reintroducing um, making a new law that allows them to tap your your phone, so like wiretaps. Um, they're going to make changes to those laws, saying that they can tap into your phones without a warrant um, if they believe there's any imminent threat or harm or for emergency purposes. So those are very broad, general terms, especially after having um, uh, activists and environmental activists in particular uh, environmental activist groups being labeled as terrorists so what they can do is oh my gosh you're speaking out against us you're a terror terrorist so you don't you know you don't want us to to drill or the pipelines or tar sands you're a terrorist 
So now we think that there is some kind of imminent threat or you're a threat and now we can look into you without a warrant and now we can really shut you down and find a way to shut you down, okay? So that's what this is all about. It's shutting down the opposing message. Using media to control the message, the, the messages that you actually get to hear and um, uh, what else? There was something else. I think that's it. I'm going to wrap it up now. Um, thank you for your question. I'm going to continue to answer it because I, I don't even feel like I've still answered it, but I have given some examples and I've posted links um, underneath this video. So uh, please ask me more questions. I, will, I would love to keep talking to you guys about this stuff. And um, thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and liking and sharing. And just, you know, thank you for talking about this. It's something that we need to talk about and really face uh, because it's become a problem here in Canada. And if you're like me, you love Canada and you want to see the best happen for our people, for the, for the environment, um, you know, just for everyone, for the planet. And you want to move this country forward into the future, okay? Uh, we want to get away from this dinosaur way of running things and treating each other and, you know, We've got to somehow, we've got to come together, we're all one, we're all connected, and we've just got to, we've got to work this out. So, uh, cheers guys, thanks for uh, watching, and um, ask me questions, and I'll see you later.